Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. And today we are looking at one of my favorite knives of 2023. I know it's a bit late that I'm reviewing this, but uh, this is so, so good that I really wanted to talk a little bit about it. Um, I've had this for quite a while now and been able to spend quite a bit of time with it. And I have to say, um, man, this is such a winner from CGR, uh, from Civivi. Uh, I, I don't know if they'll, you know, this this might be the the current elementum. Okay, we might we might be seeing this in every way, shape, or form that we could possibly imagine because it is really really cool, and I think they've done a great job here. Um, so let's go ahead and first of all, we'll run down the size and weight. Then I'll go through the the specs, and then I'll talk about you know the the overall performance that that I've had in using it for the last little while since uh, the first impressions video came out. So uh, this knife is eight and a half inches overall, three and eleven sixteenths on the blade. Now it only has three and a quarter inches of cutting edge, which is a little less than I'd like to see on a knife of this size. It's four and seven eighths inches closed. All right, so that's what you're dealing with in terms of what you've got in your pocket. Very, very deep carry clip. Lots and lots of grip area. Full four inches of grip area here. Okay, so lots and lots of room, even if you had bigger hands than mine. Uh, 3.49 ounces, which again is a huge win. Uh, and so... Overall, I think they've done a pretty nice job on this in terms of size and weight. It's nice and big right in my wheelhouse in, ter in those in terms of size. Uh, a little short on the blade on the cutting edge for the overall size of the knife, but uh, that's not a huge deal for me and I don't think for most people either. So let's start out with a quick look at this blade. So up front here, we have K110 steel in this Warncliffe style blade, or maybe modified Warncliffe style blade. Um, not super thick blade stock. I could wish for a little bit more. Like I, in an EDC knife, I like to see one eighth inch blade stock. Um, yeah, it'll be a little slicier without that, but you know, this I don't think is a knife you're going to be using that much in the kitchen anyway. Uh, although it'll certainly do the job. It's nice and thin behind the edge, which is great. We've got this fairly substantial finger choil, which is why there uh, isn't more blade length. Uh, I don't know what they could do to change that to any great degree. They could maybe make the finger choil a little smaller or maybe move the flipper tab back a little bit, which would change the geometry, which you've really got to watch when you're, when you're designing a knife. Now, thinking of designing the thinking of deploying this um it does have a nice big hole in the blade that works great for one as a design feature but two uh, as a way to finger flick this or even to thumb roll it now they've done the thumb stud in addition and it kind of feels unnecessary just because you know i, I have no problem with this whatsoever all right um, I guess I can get up on the thumb stud and, and deploy it with a little more force. And I don't know if I can. Yeah, I guess I can't really do that through the thumb hole, but I can certainly uh, spidey flick. Let me see if I can spidey flick with the thumb stud. Yeah, you can. Um, so you literally have every conceivable deployment option here. Uh, and you could have maybe cleaned it up a little bit more. It's already nice and clean. I have to say, I love that there's no branding all over the blade. There's not even, you know, even the, the steel is written right here just in really small letters hopefully i'm going to try to catch the light so you can see it i think you can see the k110 there um so let's make mention briefly of that steel k110 is essentially d2 steel it's a little more expensive um i don't know i don't think it's necessary i feel like they could have gone a different way with this i would have been really really happy if this was 14 c 28 n that would have been my preferred um, but even if it was 9CR18 or VG10 or something else, at the price point, they probably could have even done, done 154 CM. All right. Um, but it's as it is, it's fine. Uh, again, when you were dealing with D2 steel, you just have to take a little bit better care of it, right? So make sure you're cleaning it off. Make sure, you know, if you wear the, you know, you have this in your pocket and you go for a run and get it soaked with sweat and stuff, you, you just clean it up a little bit because, you know, one, it's D2 steel, plus it's got a stone wash on it. And so, yeah, there's a potential for corrosion there. All right. That's what I have to think about the blade. Overall, I do like this blade a lot. It's nice and sharp. And I love Warren Cliff style blades. They're very utilitarian. 
All right, moving on to the action. This is a button lock, really, really smooth. We've already talked about the deployment methods, which is all of them. So if you have a preference other than a front flipper, this has got it all. Um, and, and, you know, this is maybe a little bit of an unfair criticism, but I don't think it needs all of the deployment methods. We could be equally happy with by losing the thumb stud and I don't think we would lose anything at all uh, other than it would maybe clean up the knife a bit and you could extend that that uh, opening hole back a little bit further all right so um, very very good the button lock is great and I again I have said this lots and lots of times recently but button locks these days I'm going to keep it short by saying that um, button locks these days don't present some of the concerns that they did when I first got into reviewing knives. So that's great. You can be pretty confident, not the strongest locking mechanism available, but I don't think this is designed to be, you know, like a hard use wilderness survival type of knife anyway, or like a, a tactical, you know, Navy seal, you know, deep cover operative type of knife either. Okay. Um, I mean, any, any bladed implement will serve in a self-defense role, but this is more designed to be a cool looking EDC style knife. All right. Now style does come into this quite a bit and you, you have to give credit. This is a really, really nice looking knife. Uh, it's, you know, it shares the design elements from, um, the Wii Zephyr, I believe I could be getting that wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's the Zephyr. Um, and this is actually doing uh, something different that we don't often see. So um, look at, uh, we're, we're moving into the handle construction now. We've got aluminum scales, but then we've got this sort of FRN, you know, fiber reinforced plastic um, backspacer, which feels really good. And also which adds a pretty interesting design element here. Um, you can look in uh, should I have a fly? I should have a flashlight nearby. Yeah, I've got a, an old mag light that has been sitting in my drawer. So if you take a look inside, I don't know if I can show you this or not. Uh, can I get a little more? Mm. You might sort of be able to see it there, but I'm not doing a great job of showing this. You're gonna have to take my word for it. Uh, the aluminum essentially keeps going all the way to the backspacer. So if we could, you know, if we had a, an, if we had x-ray vision, the aluminum here is gonna run right up to there so that it's mostly aluminum all the way back, which gives a lot of strength. And then the only part that's not is just the the backs, the, the very back portion here, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, they've implemented a lanyard hole here into the FRN or GFN or whatever reinforced nylon, reinforced plastic they're calling this, which is really nice. And then we have this um, deep carry clip, which is really well done. It's bent over the back and held on with a little sort of nut here, and it does have a glass breaker. So um, the glass breaker, you know, it's fine. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a huge, I don't, I don't insist that knives have it. I don't even think they need it, but you know, it doesn't take away anything from the knife in this case. Uh, and so I have no issue with it. I will say, if you're going to break a window with this, put on some gloves, make sure you're wearing long sleeves. Uh, but otherwise, um, very nice. And if you want to reverse the clip, it's just a matter of loosening this off, taking it out, flipping the clip the other way and tightening it, tightening it back down. So really, really nice uh, the way that they have done this. And it's cool to see something a little bit different. I, I don't know about you, but the, you know, maybe it's because I've been doing this for a long time, but any, any bit of novelty to me is kind of appealing, especially if it's well implemented. Uh, now, one thing I have to say about this before we move into some comparisons and stuff is I, I love this handle. And so, Savivi, if you're watching this, take this handle and put, uh, hold on, where did I put it down here? One of my, one of the comparisons I have to this is the, the Serene, but drop this blade on this handle and I think we'd have a, a really, really cool knife. Essentially, you'd almost have a Serene, so maybe that's already been done. Um, but I, I could see this, this handle fitting with a couple of different blade shapes and I would actually kind of like to see that. Uh, now, Thinking of, uh, we've kind of gone through the construction and stuff. I do want to comment on utility and ergonomics. I really like the way that they have done the blade to handle re re relationship here. So if I'm cutting, I can actually get pretty well right down to the surface that I'm cutting on without my fingers 
uh, hitting. So that's really, really nice. Now, as an, e as an EDC tool, is that necessary? No, but it's, it's definitely handy. So you can kind of do this motion and actually fully penetrate whatever it is you're, you're working on cutting up. So if you wanted to use this in a, a kitchen application, you could definitely do it or any other application where you want to be able to cut down onto a cutting board or, or onto some surface. So that's a really, really nice, um, way of, of doing that. Uh, otherwise the feel in hand is really, really good. The, the GFN or FRN or whatever it is back here, uh, adds a little bit of warmth, adds a little bit of grip overall feels great. If I move up into the finger choil, it feels really good. And I like that they, there's no swedge on this. So the, the full width of the blade is, uh, available for my thumb to serve as sort of a rest. If I am choking up, which is definitely welcome. I've already commented on how good the action is, and Civivi's really got the detent dialed in. Um, you know, when you're looking at budget companies, button locks can be something that should make you hesitate a little bit. Not everyone does them as well, but Civivi absolutely knocks it out of the park. All right, what have we got for comparisons? Um, there's not a whole lot out there that's going to be really like this. Um, the Elementum, the button lock Elementum is kind of equally interesting and compelling because it's doing some things differently. Um, the Kaiser XL bag letter, and I think there might be a couple of other Kaisers that would fall into this, but you know, here's a large button lock, really nice, nicely built, some extra features and extra functionality to it, uh, that I find really, really appealing. Rat Model 1, uh, not only is it, you know, a budget knife, so it's competitive in that sense, but it's it's similar in size, so uh, that might be something to think about. Uh, let's throw a pair of two in here. I don't know where my... Uh, My military two is not really close by, but I wanted to do, I wanted to show this comparison because these guys suffer from a similar, um, hiccup, which is relatively little blade for the overall size of the knife. Um, the para, let's see here. Yeah. So this has about the same cutting edge as a para two, even though you can see it's actually a larger knife than that. Okay. And that is going to be maybe off putting to some uh, of you out there. Um, I already brought in the Serene, so that would be the other main comparison. And, uh, these guys seem to have quite a bit in common in terms of, you know, the handle shape is slightly different. Uh, I like the styling on this one a little bit more. Um, the other thing, both of these are aluminum, so you can get them in a bunch of different cool colors. Uh, and they do have, so if you don't want the K110 steel, there is a Damascus version of this. Although the only Damascus I've seen is in green. I'm not in love with the, the green here, but uh, that might be a thing. And that would mean, um, at least the last time I looked into this with any, you know, it looked seriously into this. So VV was using 9CR Damascus, which is a pretty good steel. And if you're not paying a whole lot more for it, you know, I think you got a good balance there with looks and performance. All right. So there you go, guys. That's my take on the Civivi Sentinel Strike. Definitely one of my favorite Civivis of the last few years. Uh, and there are tons of great Civivis out there. It's one of those brands that I actually feel pretty safe with recommending. Most of the time, if you're buying a Civivi, you're going to get decent a decent knife with pretty decent fit and finish and, and quality and all of that. So there you go, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to check the channel sponsors in the description box down below. That's a huge, huge help to me when you uh, do business with them. I will thank you in it. Thank you for watching and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye.